In today's Battlefield 1 benchmark, we're looking at API performance between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 on GPUs from both vendors, some of which are not shown here. And part of this look is to determine whether or not DX12 actually improves performance on the whole with Battlefield 1, because as you all know, it's not always a positive gain. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Antec and their new Cube Mini ITX case as designed by Razer, and it's a small box that supports full custom loop liquid cooling solutions. In today's Battlefield 1 benchmark, we're looking at GPU performance between the GTX 10 series, RX, 400 series GPUs, some of the 300 series GPUs, and we've also got a couple of 9 and 7 series GPUs, one of them anyway, the 750 Ti. This game, as with all EA Origin games, does have an activation limit when you're dealing with hardware swaps for 24 hour periods, five cards per game code. We have three game codes. It's a maximum of 15 cards we can test, assuming no screw ups. So uh, we are more limited on what we can do because of the EA Origin de Nuvo stuff. Let's talk methodology first, since this is always a question. This will be more intricately detailed in the article linked below. If you're curious about why or how we did something, check there first, because it probably answers the question. Partner cards were used where available and tested for out-of-box performance. Frequencies listed are advertised clock rates. We tested both DX11 and DX12 using PresentMon by Intel and Microsoft for the DX12 testing. And we execute PresentMon using command line, then use our own in-house Python script to rip out the average, the 1% low and the 0.1% low FPS, which illustrates stutters as we've explained before. Please note that we use onPresent to measure frame times and frame rate. And methodology, of course, is important, so make sure you understand what you're comparing results to if it's on present, on display, or even measured using the same tools at all. We use on present and present mon for DX12 benchmarks. Also note that we are limited again on the activations per game code, so uh, keep that in mind. Battlefield 1 has a few critical settings that require tuning for adequate benchmarking, except where otherwise noted. We disable the GPU memory restriction for testing because that triggers dynamic quality scaling, which creates unequal tests. And we set resolution render scale to 100%. Field of view was also changed to 80 degrees to more appropriately fit what we think a player would generally use on average. And that's from a default of 55. So this impacts FPS, of course, and that's also important. VSync and Adaptive Sync are disabled. Presets are used for quality as defined by the chart titles. Game performance also swings based on test locations. That matters too if you're comparing. Generally a good idea, by the way, not to compare benchmarks between multiple testers without really understanding where and how the things are tested. We tested in the Italian Avanti Savoy campaign level, sorry for the pronunciation, that's single player. And we also tested on Argon Forest for multiplayer. You can view our test course in a separate video already on the channel. The campaign was used as a primary test platform, but we tested multiplayer to determine the scaling between single player and multiplayer. Thankfully, the two are pretty comparable in performance. Depends heavily on the map as always, but even 64 player count servers, assuming the map is arranged as usual where you never see everyone at once, it's not too abusive on the GPU. Here's some of that preliminary data. The game actually scales fairly linearly between our test cases, single player and multiplayer. And note that as always, specific game events or the introduction of a lot of geometric complexity at once, like multiple tanks on screen at a high LOD will impact FPS. Similarly, flying up in the vacant sky or staring at low density objects will impact FPS in the opposite direction. For our tests, we have a planned mix of geometry effects, crepuscular rays, and in-game events. The chart we've been showing reveals the scaling between our multiplayer non-repeated real gameplay benchmark and the repeated single player gameplay scenario. Raw performance looks like this table on the screen now if you wanna see a couple of raw numbers. And that sort of spoils some of our performance results. So let's just jump right into DirectX 11 with 4K at high settings. We briefly tested with 4K at ultra settings as well to compare versus our final use of high settings with 4K. The two are actually pretty similar and this scales to 1440 and 1080 as well, generally only producing a couple of percentage points difference, a couple of frames different. But still, we settled on this chart for 4K high testing. EVGA's GTX 1080 FTW hybrids to the top of the bench, pushing an average FPS of 69 with 1% lows of 60, 0.1% lows of 56.7. And that's an indicator of consistent frame times with low latency and variance. The GTX 1070 SC operates at an average of 54 FPS for 4K high with lows dipping to 44 FPS. The Fury X is not far behind on these charts. And following these, the MSI R9390X and GTX 1060 Gaming X cards are effectively tied in their averages and 1% lows, with the R9390X imperceptibly favored 
in the 0.1% lows. The RX 488 Gigabyte Gaming X is operating at 37 FPS average at 4K high, and these three cards, the 1060, 390X, and 480, are bordering on unplayable for a higher speed shooter like this one. If you really wanted 4K gaming on these devices, which is probably not common, you would want to dip the settings closer to medium. Let's look now at how the same settings perform under DX12. With DirectX 12 enabled and using the same settings, otherwise the GTX 1080 is now operating at 59.6 FPS average, or about 10 FPS slower than DX11, and with significantly worse 1% and 0.1% low values than DX11. This is precisely why we use this testing methodology, because those stutters would not appear in the data if we just used averages. You'd be relying on subjective analysis. And the stutters, by the way, are perceptible in gameplay as sudden hitches and frame latency. You'll feel a delay frame to frame occasionally in the test passes, but not always. And in this instance, DirectX 11 should provide a smoother performance or experience overall. Looking at the next card down, the GTX 1070 sits at about 48 FPS average with similarly low 0.1% performance trailed next by the R9 Fury X and R9 390X. The Fury X has the worst frame time performance on this chart. We suspect that this is at least partially a result of its more limited VRAM, though the 390X is really not much better. And we believe that some of these frame time hits are a result of DX12 memory management falling more on the ISVs than on the IHVs, or the difference of basically a software vendor versus a hardware vendor. The ISVs are still learning how to deal with memory allocation for games with DX12, Vulkan, and other low-level APIs. So there's likely some performance and optimization issues in there to be worked out, but we don't know the full extent of how Battlefield 1 was built on DX12. Let's move back to DirectX 11 with 1440p and Ultra settings this time, not high. The GTX 1080 FTW Hybrid is chart topping with nearly 120 FPS for those of you with 120Hz displays, if that's relevant. It's running 1% and 0.1% low values north of 60 FPS and is followed most immediately by the GTX 1070 SC at 91.7 FPS average, also with tightly timed lows. Really, almost everything we're showing on this chart is fairly playable at 1440p with ultra settings, including the RX 480 Gaming X. The RX 470 isn't really the best option, but you could, I guess, tune settings down to high to hit that 60 FPS marker if it's really desired. And granted, again, most RX 470 owners probably are not running 1440p displays in addition to their mid to low end card. I guess mid range would be more appropriate. Anyway, the R9 Fury X outpaces the 1060 by about 8 FPS, or about 12%, with the R9 390X following the GTX 1060 by a few frames. The cards performing in the 60s will occasionally dip when major in-game events happen, but should generally remain playable at 1440p. Bouncing back to DX12 at 1440p Ultra, we now see the GTX 1080 FTW Hybrid is performing about 22% worse in its averages than with DX11 when we tested the same card in the same settings in the same location. The lows also take a big hit, dipping down to 22 FPS in the worst few frames of the benchmark, not the minimum, but the worst selection of the 0.1% lowest frames. And this is true across the board, with NVIDIA holding slightly higher low performance than AMD, but both are disagreeable, so really it's irrelevant who is higher than whom, because you're dealing with just poor performance in the lows across the board. DX12 performance in this case is not beneficial to either vendor, at least not for the early stages of a level. We've found that once you kind of get into gameplay and multiplayer, things do smooth over and performance improves a little bit, but you will have to endure a couple of hitches in the first couple of minutes. DX12 performance remains poor all the way down the stack when looking at the on present variance and then on display would be a bit different, but not too much. Not every single test run exhibits the variance, but it happens minimally four out of five times. The RX 480, for instance, had one test pass with 1% low values at 61.5 FPS and 0.1 at 60.9 FPS, both completely agreeable, though the other test passes each exhibited at least one or two noticeable stutters, outputting six FPS in the 0.1% lows and about 30 in the 1% lows. 1080p is still the market dominator with more than 80% of the market still on 1920 by 1080 displays as we understand it. With DirectX 11 and Ultra settings, 1080p resolution debuts larger charts for us that contain everything down to a 750Ti and an RX 460. And the GTX 1080 FTW Hybrid is beginning to approach the game's 200 FPS frame rate cap before console modifications, trailed by the GTX 1070 at 125 FPS average, then the R9 Fury X at 100 FPS average. All devices on the bench have tight frame times from both AMD and NVIDIA, other than, of course, the really low-end cards. And as for those lower-end cards, you're looking at basically a 750 Ti sub or around 30 FPS. You'd want to drop to maybe medium settings. And the RX 460 in the 40s or so, 
So again, probably drop to medium or maybe mix of medium high settings, depending on what you're going for. And if it's a two gig or four gig R RX 460. As for cards closer to a baseline 60 FPS or 1080p Ultra, you'd be able to get away with an RX 470 pretty easily with its 75 FPS average or a GTX 960 if you've got one already right around 60 FPS average. Here's the 1080p DX12 benchmark chart. You're looking at more of the same where DX11 is outperforming in the 1% 0.1% low values. And depending on which vendor you're looking at, maybe even in the averages, generally we are recommending DX11 right now for Battlefield 1. Although again, if you play for a bit, it will smooth over at least slightly. And as for one final chart, this is a scaling chart showing the performance gain or loss from low, medium, high, and ultra. This is amalgamated from a couple of cards, but we didn't test on all of them. So it just gives you a way to extrapolate performance if you're trying to run at a lower setting for a certain card. As for the best cards for Battlefield 1, we're happy to report that with this game, with the drivers that are out, by the way, all game-ready drivers, the frame time variance is really not a major issue with DirectX 11 for AMD or for Nvidia. So both of them are pretty similar in that regard. And DirectX 12 is really the only place where it becomes a variable but the low performance is really, technically it's worse on AMD, but they're both so bad that it just doesn't matter. Some maps are less bad than others. Sometimes it gets smoothed out, etc. But because averages are effectively identical for AMD between DX12 and DX11, and because they're better for NVIDIA with DX11, and as a third point, because DX12 has more variance, we'll be basing this conclusion on DX11 performance. Again, even without the variance, the average frame rate is effectively equal on AMD between the two APIs and is slightly negatively scaled on Nvidia. This will make the performance and dollar arguments a little bit less complicated. For 1080p with ultra settings, owners of last gen's GTX 960 and R9 380X will be able to play reasonably well with a few small tweaks down to high if 60 FPS is strongly desired. The RX 480 and GTX 1060s are both more than capable of performing at 1080p with the RX 480 a few frames ahead in DX12, though with worse stutters, and the GTX 1060 ahead in DX11. Both of these $250 cards scale well in 1440p and are fully capable of 1440p at ultra settings, where we see frame rates north of 60 FPS for each vendor. If you wanted to go cheaper for 1080p than the RX 470 or RX 480 4GB cards, it would both be capable of handling 1080 Ultra with FPS greater than 70 FPS average. NVIDIA's GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti are also worth considering, but we can't post the reviews or benchmarks just yet. Aside from the DX12 variants, the game is fairly well optimized for either vendor with, again, DX11. It's really not bad on either vendor. You could use a GTX 1070 or up for 4K high, or an R9 Fury X and up for 4K high if you've already got one of those. And then we'd suggest looking at your ideal card's performance in other games, obviously, if you're buying a new one today for this game. Check how it performs with other games to make your decision. Uh, because for this game, really, they all do pretty well, and they're really not too far apart from each other. But again, to recap, 1080p is easily done with an RX 470, GTX 960. One could speculate that a 1050 Ti would probably be okay on a 1080p, but we don't know just yet. And then 1440p, fine, on a 1060, 480, 4K, 1070, Fury X. And that's really all for this benchmark. So as always, Patreon link the post video to help us out directly. Links in the description below for more information, test methodology, drivers used, why we use the different cards that we did, clock rates, uh, test location, present mon, all the stuff that's always down there is in the article. So if you've got questions, check there. Probably answered. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.